Now let's assign resources. You go to resource. We added already the carpenter here, so we will just go ahead and assign both the steel fixer and the carpenters. So there are a couple of options. I can go one by one. So I opened here the resource in a separate window. So I can click on any activity that has a steel fixer resource. I click control on my keyboard, select also the slab rebar. I have also this activity and this activity. And I make just one click, so it will be assigned on all activities here. So under the resources, you will find that all rebar activities are assigned by, but I chose the carpenter. So how can I remove that? So it's a mistake. So how can I remove that? You can also select all. And select remove from here, the X symbol. So for four times, I make four uh, yeses. Let's assign the steel fixer. I click assign. Now steel fixer is assigned. Let's do for the carpenters. I have here also four activities for slabs and columns. And I will assign carpenter this time. Okay, so for the column rebar, I have the steel fixer assigned. Here the resource ID name, steel fixer. Price per unit, I cannot change it because it should have been previously identified in the resource creation. And rate type, it's a price per unit. You can have more units, so price per unit by default. And also you can have different rates. So if you go to resources, you have under the units and prices, so this is the effective date for this price per unit or the maximum units per time. So from 1st of January, I have maybe $12 per hour. And maybe by, by October, the same year, I will hire a new subcontractor. So the same resource will have higher hourly price. So you can always add the effective dates, you know, and different criteria for effective dates. And Promavera will detect that accordingly and update your usage profile and the resources and locations. Data source is resource, we'll keep it resource. And this is a primary source also. So budgeted units, this is the most important part and it has to be done very accurately because it, it changes everything. Everything on resources is based on the budgeted unit. So it's in case of labors, it's a budgeted hours. If I am having materials, so it's a budgeted units. So in, we identified the steel also as a material. So let's assign it as well. We have the steel rebar here. So I will select all steel rebars activities click assign for a steel rebar so for a labor budget units is budgeted hours so let's say i want to have 10 steel fixers so 10 steel fixers are working 10 hours per day so this means 100 hours per day worth of labor work and i have five days of work so this means the budgeted units overall hours are 500. I will do it again. So let's say it was like, say it's another value. So I can also keep it from the remaining units per time because it's a baseline. So the remaining units is actually the planned work. So if I want to assign 10 labors, this is my objective, 10 labors per day. So 10, day, 10, 10 labors per day, working for 10 hours per day. So it's 100 labor hours. So here, remaining units per time. So the number per day, so 100 per day. Once I put 100 per day, it will multiply by how many days this activity has. So five days times 100. So overall hours, 500. So you can 
calculate it either way you can calculate it separately and just type the overall positive units as i did the first time or you can only calculate the daily units how many hours you will be working per day so what if i have two labors only so maybe small activity so two steel fixers per day so two steel fixers per day each one works for 10 hours per day so it means I have 20 labor hours per day. So I do here 20 and it will be 20 per day. So overall 120 labor hours times five. So it's 100. Actual units when we do the update. So based on my update, so how many units are actually consumed? So I allocated 100, but how many labors showed up at work? and uh, how many labors are consumed up to this moment when on data date I am updating the program. So you can put it here, the remaining units also on your update, but by default in a baseline, the remaining equals the budgeted because there is no actual. So the remaining is the same as planned work or budgeted work. For the steel rebar, everything is the same, but here the budget units for me is not ours, it's ton the unit i identified before so the unit for resources for labor resources is our for the material it depends on your material type so steel rebar i identified ton so let's say we have two tons so that's it so overall 10 two times you don't have here to mention the quantities per day it does just doesn't make sense you have for this activity overall quantity to be accomplished two tons maybe promavera will calculate for you how much you need to accomplish per day it's hard to calculate it this way to determine the quantity per day so this number should be available for you right away you put two tons per day and let's do for the form work so you should have identified the labors the planned labors you need to assign for each activity then you go one by one and just to type the budget units or how many hours labor hours per day. So let's do the column form work. I will need five labors. So let's say like it's a realistic number. So let's say it's 10 steel fixers and 10 carpenters. So 10 steel fixers working for 10 hours per day. So 100 hours overall per day. So 100 here. And also for carpenters the same. I want also 100 per day, slab form work also. So let's just say that we have 10 labors, 10 steel fixers, 10 carpenters working for the concrete work in our project. We make it also 100. Okay, so now we assigned the carpenters and the steel fixers in our project. And in the next video, we will talk about the resources, histograms, and usage profiles.